Great to have you stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is October 10th. It is Monday. Now, as most of you are already aware, what we do here is we look at hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have heat that can deliver us some gains. Now, me personally, I'm a day trader. I'm out there every day, so I see a lot going on. At the end of the day, I try to share a few of these with you. Now, maybe they were already blazing today and we're running and we're hoping the fire keeps burning. Or maybe I just see a lot of smoke around and I think the fire is about to start. Whatever it is, you can count on some of these every day on this show. So come back. You won't be sorry. So, we like to look at OTC and penny stocks. There is a difference. A penny stock is any stock under $5, regardless of what market it's on. There's a ton of them on the OTC, and there's a ton of them on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange as well. So we could easily be looking at stocks on the major exchanges. But most of the stocks we look at are OTC stocks. Great example, right there, all that news. That's all OTC news from the last four or five days that I've personally looked at. You got your oldest news at the top and your newest news down here at the bottom. Now, this just isn't any old news. No, I've handpicked this stuff. There is no financial reports. There's no public offerings. This is the juicy stuff, the nice berries that shine in the sun. These are the mergers, the acquisitions, the joint ventures, new distribution deals, the stuff you want to see. So I've done all the work. Cash in on it, folks. It's right there waiting for you. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site for all of my research on OTC stocks. I love this site. It's free. I don't have to sign in. And most importantly, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. The people that matter, the people that got that pertinent, important information we're constantly looking for. So if you're constantly going out to the internet or Google, you're constantly wasting your time. Come on, folks, start at the OTC markets. Usually the first time you see it, it's right. But if you can't find what you want, the internet's always out there waiting for you. So let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today. I see we've got some bump in numbers. I've already refreshed this, so I know these are current. Our dollar volume went down. I do believe we were at 1.7 billion last Friday. Today we're at 1.5. Never like to see the dollar volume go down. More money in the market, the better for everybody. Share volume, that's up, and it's up good. We're at 12.9 billion. The highest I've seen it in maybe the last six months, five months, has been 13.4 billion, I believe it was. And we haven't hit that for quite a while. So I would like to see us break that and set a new high at 13.4 billion. But this today is nice. Trades, not so nice. We're under our floor of 250,000. Now that's just an average I've picked because it seems to be where we sit most of the time. And we are just about there right now still. So the only thing that's really jumped up is the share volume, which I am happy to see. Now I've got some interesting stocks to share with you today. I have got one that is hot. I've got one that's not. And I've got one we should have got. Let me show you what I have here. First stock we're looking at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker SOBR, Sober Safe Inc. And God, do I think this stock is hot. Psst. I mean it, folks. I really love this stock. I think it's going to be a great short hold. I think it's going to be even a better long hold. This company is disrupting a technology that has been set in concrete for decades. They're improving the mousetrap, so to speak. And their technology, as far as I'm concerned, is going to completely replace the old technology, become the standard, and used in ways we never thought it could be used, and is actually going to change society, change the way we live, make it safer. Now, the company had news come out today, and it was good news. It was big news, actually. But what it did was magnify the potential this company has. It focused right in on it, which is what got my attention, and I am loving what I am seeing. So Sober finished the day at $2.82 with just over 13% gains. So what is it they do that's got me so excited? What new technology? Well, they have got these detection devices for alcohol, and they're trying to create them for opiates, cannabinoids, THC. They're trying to create them for a lot of things. This company has come out with one of these products already, the alcohol detection device. It is developed, 
patented and deployed the sober safe system for non-evasive alcohol detection identity verification now i'm just going to show you what they got here folks now the company basically has two products that they're working with and selling right now one you walk up to and one you actually wear this is the one you walk up to this is sober check it is a touch-based desktop device that you would use say at your employers when you punch in in the morning you're also going to put your finger on this device it's going to know you instantly from your fingerprint then it's going to monitor the alcohol in your system through the vapor of your skin believe it or not and these things are 97 percent accurate where a breathalyzer is only 80 percent accurate now the company's not going to get rich selling these devices because you can store over 1,000 users into one device. So a lot of companies only have one device, but there is a $30 reoccurring monthly fee for every single user. So as the user base increases, so do the fees. So this could grow really big as it gets popular among businesses. Their second item is completely different for completely different circumstances, primarily for the judicial system, but I can see applications in other areas as well. This is a lot like the Fitbit. This is called the Sober Sure. It is a wearable device with continuous alcohol monitoring and GPS tracking. This provides notifications to managers, parents, probation officers upon alcohol detection or the removal of the device. These are 300 bucks a piece and it costs $20 a month to use them. Now think about this. If you're using them in the judicial system, the government decided to use them instead of that big old anklet at the bottom, which doesn't do anything for alcohol, it just tracks you. This can do that. Well, how many people are in the parole system? How many people are in probation? I mean, a few million, right? That is a huge, huge market. And of course, we'd want anybody who commercially drives anything to have something like that, whether it be a plane or a taxi or a train. We want them all safe, especially those semi-drivers. They're right next to us on the road. So we would like to know that that was there. But there's a better way to do it when it comes to driving on the road. Just put it in the cars. And there was actually news today. A big organization came out and they are all for putting some sort of alcohol detection equipment into cars as standard equipment. This company has already made two deals with companies that are dealing with car companies. They're working with BGM Engineering and Helm. BGM is a supplier to Ford, GM, and Chrysler Fiat. Helm already works with the who's who of automotive and aviation companies. So they have got the ends now. I mean, everything is starting to roll right now, and I think it could just explode at any moment. Honestly, do. So what was the relative volume today around the news that they had? Well, let's see if I can get to the right page here. They normally do 6.1 million. Today, they did over 28 million. So you're looking at over four times her normal volume. Share structure. Outstanding shares were just under 11 million, and I've already gone out and looked this up. We are just under 6 million for the float. It's an excellent float for a super hot stock. I love the way this is setting up. Financials, not making any money yet. Well, actually they are, they just haven't reported it yet. They're selling that item right now, and I don't know who the heck it's going to. I don't know how many they're selling or what contracts they have, but the ball has started rolling. And they said they will be reporting revenues here soon. Quarterly, well, we got a dollar on the table just to know they're sincere. What do we got for disclosures over here? All right, they have had a slew of 8Ks come out since the end of the month. And I have taken a look at these. These three right here, one, two, and three, these have to do with uh, rearranging management and settling their compensation plans. So now that they're in business, I guess they're ready to start paying their management. This last 8K here was about a public offering, and the effect was the green light. Public offering is on. It's happening right now. And that's really all we have right here. Now, when you jump over to the news, they don't have anything here since May. And let's see, did we get it down here? 1010. Let me see if they brought it in. There it is. They did bring it in down here. All right, I've already got this over here. Yahoo, because they weren't showing it here. But this did come out today. Sober Safe today announced that leading New York metro based substance appliance provider, ABW Compliance Services, has launched its touch-based alcohol screening offering with an initial multi-unit purchase of the SoberCheck solution. 
ABW's customers include top brands in air and train travel as well as global shipping. So they're touching all the bases, folks. They are into trains, planes, and automobiles, right? They've got the bases covered. They're going to hit the judicial system, which is going to probably be just as big a market as the automotive. I swear to God, I think this company is going to launch to the moon. When? I don't know. But the chart shows it's already started. It's pushing off of the launch pad right now. Matter of fact, let's go take a look at that chart right now. So we're going to be doing our charting on all these stocks on this free trading platform, Thinkorswim. You can get it by going over to TD Ameritrade and signing up for their free trading account. All you got to do is keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like. Absolutely free. So we are looking at Sober, S-O-B-R. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. We had a high bubble back here of almost 10 bucks, $9.75. Had a horrific fall here. Fell all the way down to a low bubble of 80 cents. She's been laying down here on the floor, pretty much biding time, waiting for the 200 day to come close. Once it did, she gave it the good old heave ho to get on top, but didn't hold it very long. Went plants it again until September 20th. We had a huge jump with the volume increase. She did fall, but she has been bouncing ever since and has changed her trend. She is now going up. The volume has gotten very strong in this period. Our technicals, they have been bouncing along too and show a lot of heat right now. I'm not going to say they're hot, but they are showing a lot of heat. 20-day, one-hour view. All right, we had a huge bounce here of about 400 plus percent. She came down to the 200, rocketed back up, and is coming back down to that 200. Now, let's put a little bit of perspective on this. First off, let us grab, uh, let me see. All right, let's do a channel first. I'm going to poke it here at the bottom and I'm going to try to cover as many price points where the price comes and stops and goes back up. So I've grabbed all these, grabbed all these, and grabbed that. Yeah, it did break through there, but as you can see, she did come right back in. Now let's put one at the top. I'm going to hit as many price points as I can and we're right there. So you can see she is bouncing within that triangle and it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And when it gets to the end, it's going to have to make a decision. And in many cases, you'll see a pop. It may pop up. It may pop down. Not just a dribble, a pop. And how do you know which way it's going to pop? Your technicals. Your technicals and volume will give you all the information you need. If they look negative, chances are it's coming down. If they look strong, chances are it's going up. Now let's take one more vantage look at this and let's look at our middle of this surge. I like to draw a line at the bottom of a surge, at the top of the surge. You can use the Fibonacci to do this, but it puts a lot of lines on the board. It's just kind of tough to see. Then find the center. You can do it mathematically or you can just use your eye. Close enough is good enough. That looks about right right there. So this line is half of this jump. And I want to see the price stay above this. Well, it fell way below it down here. It's bouncing inside this channel and off the 200. But right here, it got back above the 50% gain mark of that jump. This line will have effect for a very long time, not just on that day. And as you can see, it's gotten back up here on the 50% gain mark and is bouncing right across it. I did not try to line that up. That's just where the middle is. And here she bounced off her channel broke out of our channel here, but has come back in. I figure she'll probably come back down to here. As a matter of fact, if you look, it looks like our technicals are also showing that she is going to come back down. And I would presume it to bounce. Let's take a look at that five-day, five-minute look. So she has been falling since her high of $3.86 here. She got under the 200. She's been fighting with it, hit a low bubble yesterday, had a huge jump pre-market today. Now remember, this is a NASDAQ stock. You can trade NASDAQ stocks absolutely free, pre-market, after-market, with no special permissions, no special qualifications. You can trade tomorrow if you want. All you gotta remember to do is when you place your order, change the time frame. You can't have a day trade because the day hasn't started or it's just ended. You have to use extended. It can be good till canceled plus extension, day plus extension, as long as you have extension in there. If you don't, it'll just ignore your order. So remember to use extension and you can play these jumps in the morning. So she came out of pre-market, after-market hours, 
jumping and she hit her high here at oh goodness looks to be about uh, 20 to 10 that was her high right there she didn't give us a whole lot more came back down really low matter of fact if I draw a line I'm gonna get rid of all these lines here so we can see clear I'm gonna draw a line here at the bottom of this surge and the top of that surge and I'm gonna split this down the middle do 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 now I'll show you folks this is what I was talking about with the Fibonacci it already does my middle line if you'll poke the bottom and then poke the top let's see I was close I was just eyeballing it there it is right there 50 percent but this shows you algorithmic supports and resistances and that 50 percent mark is where we want to see it sit and it is way way below down there two bars down and it looks like it's sitting on it right now and you can use these lines on the Fibonacci as your supports and resistances going up or going down so she has fallen right now she is coming back up sitting on this she's still under the 20 day SMA hopefully she's going to push to get on top of the 200 on the 200 she should catch some strength as she did here you can see once she broke the 200, she got powerful. She did fall, but she had intention to get back on that 200. Maybe that's going to happen here. Matter of fact, the pattern I really like, the PPO, the percentage price oscillator, which is akin to the MACD. MACD uses the whole price. PPO uses the percentage of the price. When I see that blue line going up and I see the red line, my ADX, which is trend continuation going down, that means the price is going to go up. It looks like it's setting up for that right now. So I would keep my eye on this to jump. But we're not talking about playing it for a runner tomorrow or playing it for a quick swing. I mean, you can. I think the company's got more than enough value. I know they haven't got any money on the table right now. But you saw the product. You know what they can do, how it can make society safe. It can uh, make a ton of money just in the judicial system. Now consider the automotive sector. Oh my God. And I don't know anybody else, anybody else that's going to compete against them. First mover advantage. Cha-ching. So I like sober. I like sober a lot. Do your own DD. See what you think. You'll probably come to the same conclusion I did. It is a winning stock. The next stock we're taking a look at gets a lot of attention from the investors on a regular basis. And I, too, get a lot of questions about it. So we're going to take a few minutes here and look at ticker RNVA, Renova Health. Now, Renova Health did not have any catalyst today. No filings, no news presses, but you'd never guess it by the activity around this stock today. Holy cow, it was mind-boggling. I'm jumping over here to the current market page. You can just click right there to get to this page. This shows you the most active stocks across the entire OTC market, all 12,490 of them. And I have chosen to look at stocks under trades. I want to see the absolute highest traded stock today. And there you have RNVA second in the list, the second most traded stock on the entire OTC market with 8,000 trades. Folks, that is remarkable. That's an enormous number. Most companies don't even get into double digits each day. Triple digits is really good. So to hit 8,000, you got to pay attention to that. But what's even more mind-boggling is the volume. Look at 8.2 billion shares. Wow, that's a ton of shares. That is a ton of trades. So why then are there no gains? We have absolutely no gain. She finished the day at triple zero two and broke even. That's the problem with triple zero stocks. They can literally trade billions of shares a day and not move. Now, in all truth, RNVA did move today. She jumped up to triple zero four, so she was 100% above where she's at now. And I think she might have been at triple zero one at close yesterday. So the gains could have been higher if you were playing this for a quick play, which she is good for every now and then. But as it stands right now, she broke even, 8 billion shares, 8,000 trades, and nothing to show for it. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She does not have a verified transfer agent. Does not have a verified profile. Folks, this company has not been on the expert market. It's been pink. It's been on market for a long time. Why aren't they there? That's concerning to me. I tell you in every video how important those green ticks are. So not to have either one of them there is a bother. 
Now, they do have independent directors, and as far as I know, independent directors are necessary, and pretty much the only purpose is when you're going to uplist. Well, I can't see RNVA uplisting anytime soon, but they obviously have hopes because they've got their independent directors already. So what does this company do? Well, Renova Health Inc. is a vertically integrated provider of industry-leading diagnostics and supportive software solutions to the healthcare providers. And recently, they announced the acquisition of its second rural hospital. And we're going to get into some more information about that. Let's take a look at the relative volume today. She normally does about 409 million shares a day, which is no little feat. But today she did 8.2 billion. That's a huge jump, 16 times her normal volume, and that is a huge number. Share structure. All right, we're going to have to look elsewhere for this. Matter of fact, I think I've got this up over here. This comes from their most recent financial. Now, we just saw over here that the outstanding shares are supposed to be $1.2 billion. That's what's listed here. Well, that was of May. In this filing, it tells us the company had 4.2 billion, 4.2 million shares of common stock issued as of June 30th, 2022. Well, that's 4.2 billion. That's way beyond the outstanding share count of 1.2. They tell us here that in the last six months, they have issued 2.6 billion more shares. So we know the float is a heck of a lot bigger than 1.2. Matter of fact, I did a search on Google and I found five or six sites that all said the same number, 9.2, 9.3 billion in the float. So it is a huge float no matter which way you slice it. Financials, what sort of money is this company making? Well, at the end of last year, they made $3.2 million. We know it's millions. You got to put these zeros behind these numbers, all these numbers. But they lost money. They were down $2 million. Quarterly, they doing anything right now? Well, yeah, the last quarter they did $3 million and got to keep $2 million pretty good first quarter they did 1.1 and we're down a quarter million disclosures now this is actually where we get a lot of information all from one filing we're just going to jump into one quarterly here at 10q this came out on the 15th of august this covers up to june 30th 2022 now the finances haven't much changed their assets pretty much the same 19 million in december 19 million in june uh revenues have increased from the same period last year they were about 1 million now they're at 3.6 the problem is they're running at minus money they're running at a negative here it's costing them more than the money they're making so that is a problem now let's cover a few facts here real quick share structure They've done a lot of damage to the share structure and it seems they're the only ones benefiting from it. In July of 2021 and March of 2022, they did two reverse stock splits. One was for 1,000 to one, one was for 10,000 to one. And if that isn't bad enough, the one that they did for 10,000 to one on March 15th, that same day they increased the share count from 50 billion to 250. That was after increasing it from 10 billion to 50 billion. So they've had two reverse splits, one for 1,000 shares and one for 10,000 shares, which was the last one. And they've increased the share count from 10 billion to 50 billion to 250 billion. Folks, they're the only ones making bank right now. Their authorized shares, their outstanding share counts is getting bigger and bigger and they keep making our shareholdings smaller and smaller. So as we're buying shares, they just keep taking them back. I'm not real happy about that. They tell us here that they have sold their subsidiaries, health technologies, and advanced molecular services. They also tried to sell Epic Reference Labs. However, they were unable to find a buyer for Epic, so they just ceased all efforts to sell Epic and closed down its operations. So it doesn't look real good, does it? Then we've got some information here about what they do and how well that's going. On June 1st, 2018, the company acquired from Community Health Systems certain assets related to an acute care hospital located in Jamestown, Tennessee. They got it for $0.7 million. The hospital had 85 beds and approximately 90 square feet on 8 acres of land. 
However, the company suspended all operations at the hospital and is evaluating whether they even want to reopen it. Then in March of 2019, they acquired another hospital with 54 beds in Jellico, Tennessee. But on March 1st, 2021, the company closed that hospital and they have not reopened that one either. Is there anything else I can show you here? No, I think they've got a lot of debt. That's the one thing I can say. Most of what we've got here is a lot of debt and how they've been trying to repay it and working with indebitures and warrants and all sorts of stuff. They've got lots of debt. I think about $14 million worth of debt could be more than that. And I don't see any good business. They said most of their revenues is coming from old contracts that they're being paid on. Now, when we look at the news, if we jump on over here, let me see, 2018 is the most recent news you have here, and they had an update back here. And we'll look at that update right now. This came out of September 14th. The company expected to have profitable operations going forward. Lagan, the CEO, responded by confirming that the hospital operations were significantly improved and that he believed the hospital operations would be profitable going forward. He also cautioned that a significant amount of legacy debt and other liabilities remained, but pointed to the improvements made in the past year and his belief that improvements would continue. Jolly asked for an update on the recently disclosed plan to expand the business into providing behavioral health services. Lagan confirmed the intention to move forward with this initiative and stated that the company had recently hired an experienced individual to head up this new business. He also confirmed a focus of the new management in creating a detailed business plan that would in part in, in identify capital needs. They also asked him if he had any plans to affect another reverse stock split. Lagan stated there were approximately 10 billion shares issued and outstanding and that there were 250 billion shares authorized, meaning there was no need for a reverse split. They got enough shares. They don't need to take any more from us. And that's really all you got here. They're telling us there's not going to be another reverse split Whew. and that they think the hospitals are going to start to go profitable. They've sold off their subsidiaries and they've closed the hospitals they did buy and they got a lot of debt they're paying off. Folks, honestly, I don't see what the big deal is here. The company looks like more of a pain than a blessing. Yeah, they have a lot of shares being sold. It could be a good bounce play, but I don't see any reason to talk this company up as being anything special or rip into the moon. What's going to hold it up there if it ever gets up there? It's got nothing, right? Let's go take a look at that chart. All right, there you go. This is ticker RNVA. Six months ago, she was actually at double zero eight. Wow, that's incredible. What could she have possibly been doing back then to make her that valuable? She took a huge drop here, went to the floor. Look at that. It says zero, zero, and she has been going flat all this time. Now, what I want to show you here, you see that purple line? That purple line represents 1 billion shares being sold. Anytime she hit this with these blue bars, she had hit a billion shares or more. You can see she does it on a regular basis. But what's the price doing? Well, you are getting some jumps there. I'm not going to deny it. There are some jumps. She's jumping here from zero. <laughs> Come on. Zero, zero, zero right here. That's triple zero one right there. That's where we're allowed to buy it at. And it jumped up here to triple zero two. 100% gain. So that's all you got out of that. And then you've got a huge burst over here. And she did have a climb. She didn't just bounce up and bounce down. I'll give her that much. She went from triple zero one up to that triple zero four back down to triple zero two. So it looks like she could have kept 100% depending where this closed. Let's come on in on that 20 day one hour view. Picket fence, barcode, whatever you want to call it. Just going up and down, up and down. And the worst thing is, is that right here, right here is where triple zero one is anything below this point right here is in zeroville i don't know what the heck that's all about but it is not looking good until these last two days the last two days she has bounced she did get all the way up there and has come back down doesn't look like she's going to do a whole lot more though on the hourly chart 
Five day, five minute. Yeah, flat as a pancake, below zero, right? <laughs> Had a bounce yesterday, lots of bounces yesterday, and finished low on the 200. She then bounced very, very early today, hit that triple zero four twice, and came down and went back to her picket fences and now has fallen below the 200 day and bounced right back up and she's sitting on the 200 day right now and the technicals show no promise of growth folks this could be a bounce every now and then you might be able to scalp a hundred percent maybe get lucky and get 200 percent but in my opinion i am not a professional i am a layman trader i'm not licensed or anything i don't think the stock has anything to offer you not even a whole lot of scalping opportunities. Yes, she does a lot of shares. Yes, yeah, she uh, obviously has a lot of trades. There's a lot of investors looking at it. But can you see why? All I can say is do more DD before you let the hype hype you out. I don't think uh, our NVA has a whole lot to offer. I'm not going to recommend it. But hey, it's your money. You do as you like. Last stock we're taking a look at is another penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now that's not its price because it's the warrant to this company. This is CF Acquisition Core 8. They're a special purpose acquisition company, a SPAC. They're also known as a blank check company. These companies come onto the major exchanges as shell companies. They've got no business. They're not making any revenues. All they've got is a ticker up for sale, if you will. They're normally looking for a private company that wants to go public. Now, when you get into a SPAC, the shares cost you $10 and the price of the stock really never changes. It doesn't go live until they consummate a deal. Now, you may see the price go above 10 or below 10, just a little, but it's only worth $10. So when they have news, like they did today, you're not going to see the price action on the stock. You're going to see the price action on the warrant. This finished the day at $0.09 cents with 125% gains on that news. SPAC CF Acquisition 8 to merge with Exela Technologies European Business. So who the heck is Exela Technologies? Well, would you believe that they are already on the NASDAQ? Would you believe that they too were a SPAC? Back in 2017, they went out and got two companies, ended their spackiness, <laughs> changed their name to Exela Technologies, and this is where they sit. And they're doing over a billion dollars worth of business every year. Actually, quarterly, they're doing over a quarter billion dollars worth of business every quarter. So they're making good money. And when you look at the scan charts, you'll see them high in the charts a lot. So investors know about this company. Now, what the deal is all about, what the benefit is of taking a SPAC that has bought companies and then merging it into another SPAC, I'm not really sure, but that's what they've done. Now, you can keep your eye on XELA. She is the recipient of this merger. She's probably going to get some real strong gains, but we are looking at CFFEW. I think it's going to get bigger gains because it's a cheaper price. And once this deal consummates, the warrants will become worth something. They're going to have value because the stock has value. And that's when you see warrants jump. And when the deal is consummated, the stock price would jump as well. So let's go take a look at CFFEW. So we are now taking a look at CFFEW. This is the warrant to CF Acquisition Core. We're looking at a one day, one year chart so I can see when it came on the market. And I see it came on at a dollar on October 12th. Jeez, virtually to the day. That is one year. Now these SPACs come onto the market with a time limit, believe it or not. They've got a certain amount of time that they have to cut a deal normally 18 to 24 months. And if they don't consummate a deal within that time limit, believe it or not, the investors get their money back. Virtually all of it. I'm not kidding. If you invested $1,000, you'd probably get back like $989. They take out just a smidge for bank fees. Outside of that, the investors get all of their investment back. So she came on at a dollar, hit a high of $1.61, has been falling ever since, hit this low in May of this year of $0.04, cents, and currently we are at $0.09. Cents. 
Let's come on down to something a little bit closer. 20 day, one hour view. She's been going sideways, sitting on top of her 50 here. Had a nice bounce here a few days ago. Went from about 7 cents to 11 cents, about 35, 40% gains. Came right back down, even fell lower. The next day she had a bounce, but came down to this low bubble of 4 cents. And then today we got the news. So she's not only bouncing off of the low bubble, but she's caught that boost from the news going from four cents up to 14 cents. That's 250% gains. She fell all the way back down here and is sitting at the nine with 125% gains. So technicals, they still show strength here, folks. We show a continuation on the ADX that it is still climbing. You can see our nine day here is pushing up, growing. This shows that that is going to continue. MACD shows she still has strength, as does the PPO. So everything looks good. RSI needs a little more activity. And our five day, five minute. So she was stair stepping underneath the 50 here, falling. Had a hiccup here yesterday, jumped and fell pretty quick and came right back to where she was and then plummeted down to that low bubble right there. Next morning, she took off at 9.15, hit that high fast. That was a five minute jump. Remember, we can trade on the pre-market after market on the NASDAQ. She came down during the pre-market and pretty much all day went sideways. Now, I think this is a good one to really watch. XELA is obviously going to grab some gains. you got to watch that one, too. Anytime some more news comes about this deal, I'm sure that XELA will move. And once the deal is consummated, you'll find that the company themselves, CF Acquisition, moves. But between now and then, any good news, the warrant is going to get all of the excitement. Now, you got to remember, it came on at a dollar. That is 10 times, 1,000% from where we're at right now. She hit a high of $1.61 without anything to really get excited about. That is 1,600% away from where we are now. Yeah, I think this might be a good entry. I wouldn't put everything into it right now. You may want an entry position and build on it in case she dips a little. But with this sort of news and a company making that sort of money, this could really fly. I'd keep my eye on CFFEW as well as XELA. But the warrant, I think that's where you're going to get your biggest gains. One that's hot, sober, S-O-B-R. I think that stock is going to the moon. I think their technology is going to replace all the breathalyzers out there. That's the one I like the best. One that's not, R-V-N-A. Come on, they're selling off their subsidiaries. They can't keep their hospitals open. They're running at negative revenues and they've got a lot of debt. Yeah, they sell a lot of shares. They have a lot of trades, but they're not making any gains. Not my kind of stock. And the last one, a SPAC. SPACs can be very exciting and their warrants can go to the moon. And XELA has also got a lot of potential making over a billion dollars yearly, a quarter billion dollars every quarter. XELA and the warrant itself with the company, you got to keep your eye on them. As soon as news comes out, both are going to jump, folks. I love sharing this information with you, but don't let my DD be the all to end all. Do your own DD. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.